final day of the Republican National Convention, his speech, as the presidential nominee typically does in the final day of the convention, they give their speech kind of outlining um, their platform and what they're going to stand for as they go for the future, the campaign future for America. And, you know, I was looking at different review articles. I watched the speech myself, and I had my own feelings about the speech, but I wanted to find a news article that I felt I thought was very fair and kind of, like, match a similar view of the speech as my own. And, I mean, I'm not too surprised. I saw a lot of Democratic uh, news sources that absolutely did not like the speech one bit and called it divisive. And then I found a lot of other articles that were definitely more Republican-friendly that, like, glorified the the speech a ton. And, well, I don't think necessarily either ends of it are true. I think... The Democratic articles saying that the speech was super divisive. I personally don't think that's true at all. But I also don't think the speech was without faults either. But they're very like nitpicky faults. This article by Paul Steinhauser and Brooke Singman of Fox News. I think does a pretty good job at covering the speech itself. And then at the end of the article I'll just add in a few of my own thoughts. Of things that maybe potentially were left out. But... Overall, I thought this article did the best job of kind of summarizing Trump's speech. So Trump preaches unity as he accepts the GOP presidential nomination days after surviving an assassination attempt. That's the headline of the article. If you want to go check it out, you can search that online. I highly recommend that you do because I thought this article was very good. So Donald Trump begins his speech by talking about he is, I'm going uh, more of a word here, running for the president of America, not for half of America, because there is no victory in winning half of America. This is definitely a different thing that pr- maybe Trump has said similar things in the past, but he's never said it outright like this before in the past. For up for the RNC convention for the last few days, we heard, will Trump talk about unity? Will unity be the message of Trump's speech? Trump was said to completely throw out his past speech and go to a new one following the events of last Saturday. And I think it was pretty clear we saw that. He preached unity. He said, The discord and division in our society must be healed. As Americans, we are bound together by a single fate and shared destiny. We rise together or we fall apart. And also, this is referring to uh, Trump's, uh, the events that happened to Trump last Saturday. I already did a video on that. I'm not going to cover them too much. Echoing the president's statement, President Trump said that, um, You'll never hear it from me a second time because it's too painful to tell. I mean, you could say whatever you want about the president. I personally think it definitely moved him. It definitely is something that he's having to grapple with. and But it definitely has had a major impact on him. And I think any news articles or columnists saying it doesn't, I think are just outright lying at this point. And this... Trump began saying, let me begin this evening by expressing my gratitude to the American people for your outpouring of love and support following the assassination attempt at my rally on Saturday. Trump continued, as you already know, the assassin's bullet came within a quarter inch of taking my life. The first, like, ten minutes or so of Trump's speech is him recounting the events of Saturday, and he kind of goes detail by detail here. He said... During the shooting, when he felt something hit him, said he knew we were under attack. Trump praised the very brave Secret Service agents who rushed the stage and ran out and pounced on top of me for protection. There was blood pouring everywhere, and yet in a certain way, I felt very safe because I had God on my side. The amazing things that prior to, to the shot, if I had not moved my head the very last instant, the assassin's bullet would have perfectly hit its mark, and I would not have been with you tonight. And for anyone who watched the speech live, you can hear the tone in Trump's voice that he mean he, I think he means every single word that he's saying here. This event truly did effective or affect him and impact him. And he's definitely speaking truth and speaking from the heart here. And this is not a Trump that we've seen a lot over the last like eight to 10 years or so. Even if this is who Trump is in private, publicly, we haven't seen this Trump too much. This was definitely a very sincere, and speaking, um, let's say from the heart, Trump, that maybe we haven't seen as much. And I think that was one of the big themes that we saw at the RNC convention was this um, attempt to get people to see who Trump is when the cameras are not on him. That's why you saw several speeches by Trump's family, 
Trump's granddaughter, Kai, definitely was a good example of kind of showing who Trump is like when the lights and cameras are off. And I think Trump's speech in the beginning certainly echoed a lot of that, who Trump is when the attention is not on him. And it was what a very gut-wrenching moment when Trump said, I'm not supposed to be here tonight. And I stand before you in this arena only by the grace of the almighty God. And many people say it was a pivotal moment. And hearing Trump say that and get choked up as he said it was definitely gut-wrenching to watch. And if you could find a recording of this speech, I highly recommend that you do watch it, especially at least for this part, because this part was very hard to hear, regardless of where you stand politically. I think it's hard not to feel some sort of emotion hearing him say this. And the crowd started chanting back, yes, you are. Yes, you are. And it's not written in the article, but Trump, you can tell, is very moved by this. And he says, thank you. But he also says, but I'm not. So it's, you could just hear the emotion that in Trump. And it's definitely a moving moment in the speech. I highly encourage you recommend, or highly encouraging you checking out. He then goes on and says, none of us knows God's plan or where life's adventures will take us. But if the events of last Saturday make anything clear, it is that every single moment we have on earth is a gift from God. We have to make the most of every day for the people and country we love. And then it gets Trump stay, stays on message where he mentions the man who was unfortunately lost his life at the rally, Corey Comparatori. He was the former fire chief and he was, as I mentioned, lost his life at the rally being struck by one of the assassin's bullets. Uh, his, uh, I believe it was, I don't know the right terminology, but firefighters outfit and gear uh, was placed on the stage by the former president and he asked the audience to observe a, mem a moment of silence. Trump walked over to it at one point and gave it a hug and a kiss as well. And Trump announced that they had raised $6 million for Comparatory's family and the families of the two men who were also seriously wounded on Saturday. It's another very gut-wrenching moment and definitely something that's hard to watch, but I think definitely something valuable to watch. And then the former president also thanked his wife, his former first lady, Melania Trump, and he said, On this journey, I'm deeply honored to be joined by my amazing wife, Melania. And he referred to the letter Melania wrote uh, calling for national unity uh, in the wake of the events that happened on Saturday. She wrote, I am, think I am thinking of you now, my fellow Americans. Dawn is here again. Let us reunite now. And Trump absolutely praised the letter in his speech. And he said, thank you very much. You did something very, really beautiful. A letter to America calling for national unity. It took, really took the Republican Party by surprise. I will tell you, it was beautiful. Some very serious people said that we should take the letter and put it as part of the Republican platform. That would be an honor, wouldn't it? It's, um, it's, it really, it's hard. I don't, I don't have any words here. I think President Trump just, I think, said it very, very well. And it was definitely another, there's a lot of, like, moments in the speech where it's hard not to like kind of feel gut wrenched or emotional or really impacted and I think this is another example of that and Trump so obviously called out Melania and then also Trump also thanked his family his children his grandchildren a few of them gave speeches as well as I mentioned earlier and then after this President Trump called for a lowering of the temperature in a political climate seared with heated rhetoric from both the right and the left something that I don't think he's done before and especially not in this way he said in an age when our politics too often divides us now's the time to remember that we are all fellow citizens we are one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all and this is a moment the crowd went absolutely crazy for and had very loud applause we must not criminalize dissent or demonize political disagreement in that spirit, the Democratic Party immediately stopped weaponizing the justice system and laboring their political opponent as an enemy of democracy, especially since that is not true. Obviously referencing the court cases where uh, Trump is being uh, prosecuted by several district attorneys across the country who are all Democrats. Trump uh, going after the Democrats and Democratic Party for that. So this is where Trump's speech begins to pivot a little bit. 
while still appealing to unity, but going a little bit into the more partisan attacks from Trump that we're more used to, but still keeping that message of unity as well. Saying, to every citizen, whether you are young or old, man or woman, Democrat, Republican, independent, black or white, Asian or Hispanic, Trump repeatedly criticized the administration of the White House, not using Biden's name too often, he only said it once, but going after the administration, they will not have done the damage that Biden has done, only going to use the term once, Trump said. Biden is not going to use that name anymore, just one time. Trump then went into a lot of the uh, policies that he often talks about his rallies, talking about inflation, the crisis at the southern border, ongoing wars in Ukraine and in Gaza, and said, it's time for a change. We can't. We simply cannot sustain four more years of this administration. And then Trump also reminded his supporters that the Make America Great Again movement has never been about me. It's always been about you. It's always been about the hardworking, patriotic citizens of America. And coming to what was the biggest news of the weekend or of the week, excuse me, before Trump's speech, was that Trump chose Senator J.D. Vance to be his vice president. He thanked uh, Vance and his wife, Usha, in his speech. I am thrilled to have a new friend and partner fighting by my side, the next vice president of the United States, the current senator from Ohio, J.D. Vance, and his incredible wife, Usha, and kind of just fully cementing that into his speech and where the party was going from there. And not just Trump, but the Republicans use this convention as kind of a way to try and unite the party and energize the delegates and activists in the party to try and go with Trump up against Biden or whoever Democrat they face. I have a feeling there'll be some videos about that in the next few days about who Trump may be facing. And this push for party unity was seen by many different um, Republicans, some of which were friends, some of which were rivals of Trump, like Ron DeSantis of Florida and Nikki Haley of South Carolina, who were both went up against Trump in the Republican primary this past winter and spring, and definitely got very heated and very divisive, but in the speeches, they showed support for the former president, and I thought did a very good job. I watched those speeches as well. I thought they did a very good job at trying to unite the party and throwing their support behind Trump. And of course, though, Biden and his campaign team um, did not see everything the same way that a lot of Republicans did taking aim at Trump, Vance, and the Republicans as the GOB convention wrapped up. Over the course of the last few days, Republicans have offered their vision for the country, and now it's never been more clear that Americans will face a stark choice, a contrasting vision for this country, Biden Principal Deputy Campaign Manager Quentin Folks emphasized. I mean, this, this is not a surprise one bit. And continuing, the Biden-Harris ticket, who is focused on uniting the country, creating opportunity for everyone, and lowering costs, or the Trump-Vance one, with a harmful agenda of taking away Americans' rights, hurting the middle class, and making life more expensive, while benefiting the ultra-rich and greedy corporations' benefit. I mean, at very least, you have to understand that this is not a surprise one bit. President Biden, a few days ago, called for national unity and to lower the temperature and the rhetoric but this is politics. This is something that gets very, very heated. And I don't think the Democrats are going to slow down their attacks on Trump one bit. Or if they are, they're definitely going to fade over time. I don't think this attack by Biden's principal deputy campaign manager, I don't think it's necessarily like as like fiery as some of the past statements made from them about Trump would be. And it goes both ways. I'm just using the Biden campaign as an example here. I don't think this is necessarily as like outlandish as some of their past statements will be, but I kind of feel like right now, politically, we're in like the honeymoon period of where things aren't too, following Saturday's events, aren't too like hot in terms of attacks and such and uh, wording being used, but I think that's definitely going to change as uh, time moves away from Saturday's events, and I think this is a little bit of an indication of just because President Biden impeached unity, that doesn't mean the Democrats are going to stop calling Trump and Vance harmful, harmful for America, taking away rights, all things that Trump has completely denied. 
but the Democrats continue to use as attacking uh, points. So I don't think this is going to change one bit how the campaign is showed. The only thing that may potentially be changing is the Democrat at the top of the ticket, but the Democrats, as expected, will continue to go after Trump and go after Trump rather hard, I would say, and I don't think the Republicans are going to do much different either. I think Trump's calls for unity and such at that convention. I'm very interested to see how things change over the coming days because there are even moments in Trump's speech where he went back to some of his original talking points from past speeches, such as going after Biden that one time, going after Nancy Pelosi, and talking about the 2020 election. There are still instances of Trump in there that I think will be reappearing again as the campaign trail, but... At very least, this seems like a more unified Republican Party that we've seen even over the last 10 years. So it's interesting to see how this goes forward. The Democrats, I at very least do not expect to slow down their rhetoric against Trump in advance one bit. The Republicans, I think, are more of a wild card. I'm interested to see how they handle going after the Democrats now. So that is pretty much it, how Trump's speech went. Other quick notables from the RNC convention I just want to mention briefly I thought Kai Trump's speech, outside of Trump's, I think was the biggest winner of the debate, uh, kind of echoing like a unity, oh, well, not unity as well, but echoing into that unity effect, showing Trump as the grandfather, not just the political figure, but as the grandfather that her and her entire family knows, I think definitely was a very nice moment and something that definitely humanizes Trump in a way that many times in the news media we don't see as much. I thought that speech was very good. I thought both Trump's children's speeches from Don Jr. and Eric, I thought were very good. Hulk Hogan's appearance, I mean, whether you're a political fan or a wrestling fan, I mean, that was just awesome to watch. And kind of seeing him, uh, you know, rip the shirt off and reveal the Trump Vance tank top shirt. Like, you don't have to be a fan of politics to enjoy that. But I think if you are a fan of politics, you definitely enjoyed that. That was very entertaining. I think this convention, I would not be surprised if this goes down as one of the best, like, performing conventions in American political history. I think the numbers of people watching it are going to be very high. I think the engagement levels are going to be very high. And I think the overall satisfaction of it is going to be very high. I think I think the RNC did a very good job putting this convention on. I think following the events of Saturday, it was very clear, I think, what they wanted to do and the message they wanted to convey. And I thought they did a very good job achieving it. In addition to that, to that, as I mentioned, I thought Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley gave very good speeches talking about unity of the party. I thought Sarah Huckabee Sanders gave, gave a very good speech as well. She is someone that I mentioned in my vice presidential video a few days ago or a few weeks ago now. I think Sarah Huckabee Sanders has a big future in the Republican Party, either as the vice president or a president. Her speech echoed that, and I think she did a very good job, and she's one of the biggest winners from this weekend in terms of potential political future. Having also mentioned Kai Trump, I have to also mention Laura Trump, vice chair of the RNC. I think her political future is very well. I think the Trump family's political future was very good coming out of this convention. You know, once Trump steps down, uh, if he gets reelected president, once he steps down for four years, I do think that the Trump family politically is not going anywhere. And I think this convention kind of showed that, that there's still a bright future ahead for the Trump family and the Republican Party. And kind of how things went this week kind of showed that. And there were other speeches as well that I really liked. I thought Dana White's speech was very good. Um, kind of talking about Trump, the person that he's known for a long time. That was a very good speech. Tucker Carlson's speech, I thought was very good. J.D. Vance's speech is one that... Despite him being the vice president, I don't think it's actually getting too much attention, obviously, because Trump's speech is going to kind of drown it out a bit, and some of the other Trump family speech is going to drown it out a bit. J.D. Vance's speech, I thought, was very, very good, and I think kind of shows that he's clearly trying to get the people in America who feel they've been, like, or who have been cast aside, their jobs have been sent overseas. That's what J.D. Vance is, and it sounds, it sounds very similar to what Trump's campaign message was back in 2016. That very same message that won Trump the Rust Belt states of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. And I don't think it's any mistake that J.D. Vance seems to have the same background and history of those people. That's not a coincidence. I think Vance is going to be very, very important in trying to win those Rust Belt states 
and try to return those jobs to the forgotten men and women, especially of the Rust Belt in the Midwest. I don't think that's a mistake one bit. I thought Vance's speech was very well. I gotta say, I really... I'll be doing this for the Democratic Convention as well in a few weeks, but I, I really can't think of anything that happened at the convention that I thought didn't go well. I thought overall it was all very well done, very well run, and I think Trump and the Republican Party has a lot of reasons to be happy and proud with how things went. So that's going to do it for today's video. Definitely a longer one, but there's a lot of things to break down and go over. Um, if you agreed or even disagreed with me, feel free to like this video and leave a comment below telling me your thoughts. I mean, it's okay. It's politics. We're allowed to agree. We're allowed to disagree. Don't worry. Everything's good. But yeah, if you want to leave your feelings or opinions or below, please, please, by all means, feel free. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in a future video.